Good evening and welcome to River Life Church International's evening Bible study here on Wednesday. Just want to greet you and, and thank you for tuning in this evening. And if you're watching at a later time, we welcome you and just hope that you are blessed as we continue our thought and study on the Spirit is moving. We just finished up a study on the, the fruit of the Spirit and what an enriching time that has been in studying and, and reflecting and, and depending upon the Holy Spirit to produce His fruit within us. And we're going to continue on that thought of the Spirit is moving because it is so important to never forget that the Holy Spirit is active and moving here today as much as he was in the beginning he is moving here today amongst us and he will as the Lord tarries and, and, and we, are, we are so fortunate and blessed to have the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit so we're going to continue on this thought of the Spirit is moving and, and talking about power to be a witness, power to be a witness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time of study and this time of, of depending upon you and allowing your Holy Spirit to do a beautiful thing within us. Jesus, would you just let it be known here today, this moment, this study, that you have a beautiful gift, a beautiful power, Father, that you have that you would want to give us and that you want us to be clothed with. Holy Spirit, would you just make the scripture just jump out of the page into our hearts and our minds, into our spirit, into our soul. And let us be changed and transformed and, and motivated and encouraged to see your power in us to be a witness. So the Spirit is moving, talking about power to be a witness. And, and we, we start with Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. How powerful the promise of the Father. And Jesus preached about this, that, hey, I, I must go away. It is... It, it is much better for me to go to the Father so that his promise, the Holy Spirit, could come. And, and see, there was so much understanding that the disciples and those that followed Christ could grasp in that moment. It wasn't until they actually were filled with the Holy Spirit. It wasn't until that day of Pentecost in the upper room that they, were, they came into a realization of, wow, okay. This is much greater than we could, we could ever imagine, ever could think of until they experienced it and knew what happened in their lives in that moment, that holiness, that transformation that would make a difference in their lives and the, and the lives of those that they would encounter. So important to understand. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me, witnesses of Christ. Jesus. So important. When it comes to talking about the Spirit is moving, the power to be a witness, it is to be a witness unto Christ. Be a, a witness of his life, his, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his, his coming back. His second coming. To be a witness unto Jesus Christ. And to the people here, Jerusalem was where they were at and in and, and their hometown. But then it went a little farther out in Judea and then a little farther out in Samaria. And then to the end of the earth. That To be a witness. That we are called to be a witness. To be a witness. See, Jesus also said in Luke chapter 24... Verse 49 says, and behold, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you. 
but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. I love this translation. I love when it says clothed. You just put that picture of something just beautiful that we're being clothed with, like nothing we've ever been clothed with before. That's a mouthful to say. <laughs> and I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed. There had to be that waiting. There had, there had to be that seeking. There had to be that hunger and that thirst with the people. To be clothed with power. Not just any kind of power, but power from on high. See, today we're talking about one of the very important aspects of the Holy Spirit is that, and his movement is the power to be an effective witness. To be a powerful, an effective witness witness not prideful not in our own strength or our own ability but to move with his power to be and a witness that he desires us to be that to be a witness see acts chapter 2 verse 1 through 4 says when the day of pentecost had fully come they were all with one accord in, in one place that upper room and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Powerful, powerful moment. A transformation happened that day, at the day of Pentecost, a transformation, something like never before happened a holy and a divine encounter shaped this group to move ahead like never before because there was a plan and a purpose you know jesus talked about the great commission but they, they little did they understand that in that great commission that they needed this power until they realized it and they started moving ahead in the the, the building of of the church of jesus christ that they needed the power to be clothed with the power because to try to do the will of God apart from his anointing and his spirit, they would not have seen the results. At least they wouldn't see results that were lasting. See, we can do things in our own strength and our own ability and build something that, that might look good at first, but will it last if God's hand is not in it, his spirit's not in it, his anointing's not in it? We got to remember, we got to understand that what what lasts and what's eternal, eternal, and what God wants to do, we need to do with His Spirit, with His power, being clothed with what, with what He desires. See, we look at Peter, right, and right moments after being filled with the Spirit, they people were hearing them speaking in tongues and and and. People could understand there's people from all over different regions and they were picking up uh, dialects that should have never been sp spoken in, in Jerusalem, in the, in the city, that it just didn't make sense. But they could hear these people praying in tongues and they knew they weren't from their areas, but they could hear that they were speaking perfectly praises and utterances unto God and telling them how holy and wonderful he is. And, 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 and even in that point that people were like, are these people drunk? And that kind of were mocking them. And, and something happened within Peter, the same Peter who, who denied Christ three times and, and, and was sick to his stomach about it. Something happened to him. There was a transformation that took place in his life when he was filled with the Holy Spirit because we see in verses 14 through 47, I'm not going to read all of that. That's for you to go study yourself. But he says, hey, man, that, like I said, three times the night Christ was now bold to stand up amongst the crowd. A crowd that was mocking, a crowd that didn't understand, a crowd that maybe wasn't very nice in the moment. But he had a boldness of the Holy Spirit rise up in him that he stood up and to raise his voice and let it be known to the crowd what had taken place. He was a witness. He, in that moment, he spoke boldly and you read it in those those verses of 14 through 47 to the point where 3,000 souls were added to that day 
at that very day, 3,000 souls were saved. The Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. See, it was only by the, by the working of the Holy Spirit, the filling of the Holy Spirit, that power to be a witness that the Lord added to the church daily, those who were being saved. And it was because the people were going out and being a witness. Being clothed with power is the key to maturity and being a witness. And like I said, we, we read it here in, in Acts chapter 10, 44 through 48. And I won't read those here, but, um, but also in, in Acts chapter 19, 1 through 6, where Apostle Paul laying on the hands of, of people that hey, they had not heard anything prior about they, they heard about the baptism of John, but they had not heard about this baptism of, of by Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. And they were hungry and they thirsty and they wanted it. And Paul laid hands on them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And it says uh, 12, about 12 of them that day. You read in um, Paul being filled in Acts chapter 9, 17 through 18. Him being filled with the Holy Spirit. Then him saying how he speaks in tongues more than you, all the importance of, of, of praying in the Spirit. We read that in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18. And then you read also the encounter that people had and being filled with the Spirit in Acts chapter 8, 14 through, 15, 14 through 19. It's so important. It's so important, the power. Of, of, of the, being a witness, the power of the Holy Spirit to be a witness, that evangelism, and, and, and going out and seeing the wonderful working God work through his people to see people saved, to see people set free, to see people healed, to see people filled with the Spirit, delivered. See, The witness they became when they were clothed with power. The witness they became like never before. See, there's some benefits. I just want to get into this a little bit because we got to understand. Benefits of being filled with the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2 says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries so important when we are filled with the spirit and that physical that initial physical um, evidence of speaking in tongues happens when we are filled with the spirit that there's there's a there's a, a language that we do not know we don't understand but God does and God has picked it specifically for us in that moment in in, in our lives that we are to speak and, and that we have to understand that God is our audience when we're praying in tongues Praying for God's perfect will to be done in a situation. When we're moved by, the, by, by, by praying in tongues. It's a one-on-one -on -one direct line. Just, just last night, Amay uh, told me this morning that she woke up in the middle of the night. and She had an urge to pray in the, in the spirit. I mean, pray in tongues for someone specific. And she didn't know what was going on in this person's life, but all she knew that there was a prompting of the Holy Spirit to pray in tongues. So right there in bed, she started praying in tongues. Number two, one of the other benefits of being filled with the Spirit is being clothed in his power helps us in our weaknesses. That, that there's something about when we, in Romans 8, 26 says, likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray. Oh, I did put it in here. For as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So understanding that, hey, when we are weak, there's something about when we are praying in, the, in tongues, we're praying in the Spirit, in our heavenly language, unto God. In those moments that there's an edification that happens that we are pressing in, we are praying in the tongues and we're praying in the Spirit, that we feel something just rise up in us. And there's a boldness. There's something that happens. And like the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Helps us. For we do not know what we should pray for, for as we ah, But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. We pray in the Spirit. So important. The filling of the Holy Spirit brings us zeal. 
to be a witness. And that word zeal is a great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an objective. See, there's a zeal that happens. And that God wants us to have a zeal for him. And, and how we have that sustaining zeal is through the power of the Holy Spirit, that feeling of the Holy Spirit in our lives that brings us zeal to see his will done, his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So important that we get a grasp of that in our daily walk with him. Prayer is the foundation of our witness. Praying the scriptures and praying where it can be understood, like English or whatever your, your language is, is, is important, but we can't leave out praying in the Holy Ghost. See, I love praying the scriptures. I love praying um, as things are coming to me as I'm praying in English, but there's those times where, man, nothing is better in that moment than praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues. Praying in our heavenly language, so important, not to leave out any of it. See, we can't afford to de-emphasize the working of the Holy Spirit. This clothing of power is important. We can't afford to de-emphasize this, the working of the Holy Spirit. Like we've been talking about, the Spirit is moving. We can't afford to de-emphasize the Spirit is moving. The Spirit is moving. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, nor should you want to grieve the Holy Spirit. But we should take hold of what the Spirit wants to do in our lives and through us. So important. I love this uh, script, uh, not scripture, but this quote by Amy Simple McPherson that I stumbled upon a couple days ago and saved into my phone. That which rain is to flowers, that which the sun is to the earth, that which the wind is to the sail, and that which the steam is to the engine, so is the Holy Spirit to the church. As the church, we need the Holy Spirit. The church without the Holy Spirit is not alive. We need the Holy Spirit. It's so important. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. It's so important. See, we do not preach a philosophy, but we preach an encounter with the living God. This is part of having an encounter with the Holy with God is being clothed with power. We need a fresh outpouring of His Spirit in our daily lives, a personal revival, a refreshing within us. We are meant to have a fresh, like I said, a fresh encounter with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit daily. What does He want to do? He wants to clothe us daily with a fresh anointing fresh feeling of his spirit. It's so important how we start our days. Do we start our days perfect every day? Absolutely not. But we must have it in our minds and our spirit that we, that there's a, if we will take that time in the morning to reach out and we command our mornings in prayer, in the help of the Holy Spirit, asking for his will to be done, for his fresh feeling. Is refreshing in our lives. It's going to make a difference. It's going to help us. You know, in closing, like those that waited to be clothed with power, don't relent until you are filled yourself. Maybe you're watching tonight and, and you want to be filled yourself. And maybe you've never been filled yourself. Don't relent until you've been filled. Maybe if you've been filled before, but maybe you haven't spoken in tongues in a while. And maybe you haven't felt that power. Holy Spirit in your life. Don't relent until you receive. He loves to give fresh refilling. That power to do his will. So important. He fills the hungry and thirsty. Ask to be filled and you will be filled. I've heard it and I've seen it where people were filled just in a room by themselves. Laying in bed. Pastor Jim talks about when he was a young kid being filled with the Holy Spirit, hiding behind a couch. <laughs> I mean, no one, he said, no one laid hands on him. Sometimes I remember when I was filled with the Holy Spirit when I was in junior high, I laid hands, somebody laid hands upon me. And I, I spoke in tongues. I remember later on when I had come back to Christ, I had not spoken in tongues in years, and I needed that fresh and filling, filling of the Spirit when I was a freshman. Um, a sophomore in high school. I remember laying in the church um, 
on the floor crying. And I remember just like, God, refill me, refill me. And no one laid hands on me. And in that moment, I was just filled with the Holy Spirit, like a refreshing, a refreshing like I never felt before. It can happen. Will we, will we ask? Will we receive? Like, like those in the upper room who are not relenting until that gift of the, of the Father, of the Holy Spirit was on them. The Spirit is moving, and he wants to, to clothe us with power to be a witness. And I encourage you with this word.